Hello, my name is Kevin Young from Moonlight Mantids, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something unusual. We should do mantids, but um, a close orthoptered cousin of the mantis is the roach, which we all know mantids evolved from. So today we're going to talk about one of my favorite roaches and Sam's. Um, the pepper roach, hold on here, which is Archimandrita tessaletta. Tessaletta! Which are great for handling, as you can see. It's just kind of climbing on me. Big, beautiful roach. Has a face. You can see it really well. And... We'll climb up your shirt. Oh, let me see if I can get a close up. Look at you. Look at you. See that? Just a nice pretty roach. Look at that. Just holding it, enjoying it. Real easy to keep. Okay, um, they are uh, known as the giant pepper roach also. Um, they are found throughout Central and South America, which is pretty cool. Uh, they're pretty slow to mature though. They take about, uh, gee, I'm not exactly 100% sure. Um, but they can take a while. I know they can live a few years, but uh, it, it depends on temperature because they're ectothermic. So it depends on how well you take care of them, but um, uh, six months to a year you can expect adults if you have really tiny nymph. They get really big, so the nymphs get really huge and then they make beautiful winged adults. Male and females are winged and um, they don't climb or fly. They can kind of flutter their wings a little bit in the cage there and then like do like their little mating dance the males do and other uh, live bears, which is cool. Um, let's see here. They like to eat like uh, um, they like fish food. If you've ever given roaches fish food, you just like the dry flakes, the goldfish food. You just kind of put it in there, and they'll they just eat it up. They love that protein. It's really, really, really good for them. You get every single one of them to come flying out of the dirt um, for that, or a little bit of dog food if you can. Um, some apples, fruits and vegetables, um, that kind of thing. Be careful to make sure that you feed them one day. If they don't eat it overnight, make sure you take the food out because you don't want it to get moldy. If it gets moldy, they're gonna get sick and they're they're gonna you know they're gonna die and stuff. And you want to just keep them really healthy um, because these roaches like to be kept a little bit moist. Um, a few inches of eco earth in like a ten gallon tank or a shoe box or even keep a few in a deli cup, a nice big one. Um, it just depends on how many you want to keep and what the size colony. I have a ten gallon colony. And it just is beautiful. It has hundreds in there, all size, every size. It's been going for like four years, five years. And um, they're just, just a great, great roach. They're really beautiful. You'll notice all the different markings. They get kind of a sort of like a black peppering, and um, they, they're orange to black. And um, just a really easy one to keep and handle. Uh, let, me ch let me just check it out. The uh, cool thing is, if you've kept mantids, uh, you know a bit about sexing um, insects. Uh, the roach, roaches are the same as uh, some of the mantids there. Um, for the peppers, they have a unique shape, which I'm going to post pictures of. I guess it's hard to explain um, the sexing on these mantids, uh, the roaches. I'm, su I'm such a habit for uh, of doing that, that I'm, I'm talking about roaches and we're talking about mantids. Oh my gosh, tongue-tied, sorry. Um, I'll make sure to post a little bit more information about these. Um, I guess the sexing sexing's not that important. If you get like a dozen, it's going to make a really big, really beautiful colony in about a year inside of a nice 10-gallon tank. These are not a cheaper roach, although roaches individually are not expensive. Getting like 10 or 12 or two dozen for a nice starter colony can be a little bit pricey um, just because these are more of a pet roach. Uh, you could use them as a feeder. They would be safe to do so, but you'd be it'd be, it'd be like feeding, you know, blue dog food to your, you know, to your, to your lizard, just like really, really expensive, but probably, you know, pretty decent food. Um, that probably was a bad example. Anyway, um, you, you could feed them to stuff if you wanted to, if you got like way too many. Um, my bear dragon eats them once in a while and he, he does pretty fine, but, um, it, they're more of a pet, pet roach, but if you wanted something you could kind of play with and then also use feeder, you could kind of do that. Just expensive and, you know, I, I keep saying it, but, uh, probably not the best idea. Um, let's see, a few inches of, uh, soil, um, also, you, uh, they like a lot of, like, wood, like bark, um, branches, things like that, you can even use leaves, they'll even chew up on the leaves and the bark and the wood use, um, make sure that if you're taking stuff from outside, um, put it in the oven at, at 350, preheat it to 350, and for every inch, put it in the oven for half an hour, so if it's an inch thick or under an inch, half an hour, bake it, and that'll kill all the parasites, mold, bacteria. Make sure you let it cool down and then put it in there. You can do that with bark. You can do that with pretty much everything. Don't do that with leaves because they'll probably burst into flame by that time. Um, but um, like other wood materials, for every inch, half an hour at 350 in your oven. Put them on a cookie sheet and make sure you're telling someone else about this so when they don't, you know, there's a huge fire because you forgot your wood in your oven. 
but um, your branches and your bark and stuff. And you can basically, like, you go to the store and spend, like, 20 bucks on a real big piece that can fit in a 10-gallon or a 20 and just have this real big, beautiful um, piece of wood and stuff, and it's real decorative and awesome. Go out and cut a piece to size, I, just from anywhere. Um, so long as it's not, like, sap. You don't do pines, things that have, like, a lot of sap. Um, stick to hardwoods when you're doing, like, decor type stuff. Um, and then, you know, bake it, and you can use it for, for your roaches. Uh, some eco-earth is perfect. A um, few inches of that. Keep it moist. Um, uh, mist it daily if it's, like, open air, kind of, you know. Um, mine is kind of covered with some film, and I'll show you here in the end real quick, and I'll show you some of the roaches, too. Um, just uh, make sure they stay moist, not moldy. Make sure you take the food out after a day. Um, let's see. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. They're pretty easy to take care of, and they're pretty awesome. So let me show you one real quick. Squeaky chair, squeaky chair. Okay, hold on. Um, okay, here. This is your standard pepper roach. Very beautiful. Oh, let go your friend. Right there. Probably not the best lighting in here, but this is a how-to video, and this is my hand. I'm a grown man. Got a decent-sized hand and a massive cockroach. Beautiful specimen here. And they're not going to nibble you. They're not going to bite you or anything like that. Um, there she is. Look at that. She's just beautiful. And they'll make lots of babies. But you can do what you want with. Okay, get off. Oh, my God. Okay, okay, okay. We're fine. We're fine. Let me just show you the nice tank that I have. Um, so what I've been doing recently is uh, I take these. Uh, this is just a standard 10. And uh, it's got, um, I like these clay terracotta dishes that use for pots. It's like, I use it like a food bowl. Just to prevent the food from getting in the soil, the soil, uh, the food from getting moldy. It just kind of keeps the food dry as long as possible. Um, I don't put like apples or vegetables on top of that. That kind of goes in the soil. Things like beets, radishes, carrots, um, potatoes. Those things I kind of put in the soil. And because they don't tend to rot in the soil, because um, they're pretty good at inhibiting mold growth, then uh, they can kind of stay in the soil as long as they get moldy like carrots and things. But I keep my dry food, and when I put f f uh, fish flakes and stuff in there, as long as I know they're not going to eat too much or I try to overfeed them, I use the terracotta pots. Here's some wood. This one was store-bought. Uh, here's your standard 10 lid. And what I've been doing for a while is I'll take that uh, window sealing stuff, and uh, it's got the double-sided tape, and you take your hair dryer, and you just kind of dry it onto the inside of the lid so it makes a nice um, airtight sort of uh, barrier. And I just poke some holes in here for some ventilation, but I open it. Um, Pretty much every every day or every other day, so I can uh, take care of them. So that that makes sure that they get plenty of uh, ventilation, and it seems to be some semi moist. It's not super moist or dry or anything. Um, it just feels like uh, there's moisture there, but it's not too dry. And I just make make sure it stays about that level. And um, I keep them all in here. And uh, there's all different sizes. You can kind of dig through these. That's a nymph. It's a huge nymph. It doesn't have wings yet. It's I can tell it's a nymph. And it, uh, it looks real good. They're great for handling. If you've got uh, a bunch of nieces or nephews or kids that really like this stuff, this is a good one for them to kind of play with. And these are all farmed, too. People are like, oh, my God, roaches are gross. These are farmed roaches. They do not carry disease or anything like that at all. They spend their whole life in these fairly sterile conditions, and they only come into contact with their food and each other. So really, truly, how is anything like this going to carry disease? It's completely ridiculous. These are farmed in sterile conditions, and... You know, see, there's all sizes there. And overall, just a, a really great pet roach. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you later. Bye. I love pepper roaches! Ah!